set us up, and we're building our NAS. This is episode 11, I believe, and we are going to be going over ZFS, which is a file system that was created by Sun Microsystems, and it is basically like a combination of RAID and LVM, which, and it also includes compression, deduplication, snapshots, cloning, a whole bunch of features. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, we booted into our NAS, and we are logging in as root, and this NAS has three blank eight gigabyte drives for demonstration purposes, and uh, they are B, C, and D. So the first thing we need to do is set up the ZFS repository so that we can get updates, that kind of thing. So we need to find out what version of CentOS we're running, and we do that with this file. It's under Etsy called Red Hat Release, and we see we're running under 7.6. So now we're going to do a yum install from this website, download zfx on linux.org slash epel dash zfs dash release dot el seven underscore six dot no arc dot rpm now if we were using a different version of sent os say 7.5 then obviously this path would have a seven underscore five in it and seven four three and then or seven 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 eight you get the drift. So we're going to download this RPM. And yes, we shall install it. Good. So we're done. Now, we need to do a little bit of an edit. And what we're going to be doing is changing from how the, uh, we're going to be changing how the modules are loaded into kernel. There's two different methods, which is uh, DKMS and KABI. And right now, by default, it goes to DKMS. And the, the reason we don't want to use DKMS is that if we have to update the kernel, which will happen, then the module must be recompiled again. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So we want to switch to KABI and it does not require recompilation. So in order to do that, we need to edit the repo that was just installed for us. So if we go to Etsy and then go to yum.repos.d, this shows all the repos that are, in, that are on our system. And we see the zfs.repo, so let's edit that. Okay, so what we're wanting to do is we're going to disable the default ZFS by setting enable to zero. And then for ZFS-KMOD, which is the KABI, we want to set that to one. That's all we got to do. The rest of it we're not going to use. So now we're ready to do our install. And that's as simple as yum install ZFS. And it's going to have to download some dependencies, of course. So we'll let it think about that. So far, everything's looking good. There we go. So it wants to download um, ZFS and the dependencies. You see KMOD there and some libraries. So we'll say yes here. OK, this installed. So the last thing we need to do is reboot. And so we will issue our reboot command. All 
Okay, we've rebooted, so let's log in as root again. And to verify that uh, ZFS is installed, we can do the following command. Well, lsmod and grep for ZFS. And yes, it is confirmed. We do have ZFS installed. So now that we've confirmed, confirmed that ZFS is installed on our NAS, let's put it to use. The I know I have three hard drives here, but I want to first set up a mirror which may be a more typical install. And with uh, ZFS, it's surprisingly easy. So again, I'm going to do LS block, and we got B, C, and D. So we'll use B and C. So all you got to do is, oh, one other thing. If we go to the root, you know, I have a folder set up called NAS, which, of course, has nothing in it because we're not mounted and there's, you know, nothing there. So with the ZFS, uh, I do want to create um, a mirror and put it on NAS. Well, with ZFS, you don't really mount it. It creates the mount points automatically for you. So what I need to do is I need to remove NAS. Now we can proceed and th the command is zpool, create. And we give it a name. I'll call it NAS. I give it that it's going to be a mirror. And I give it the devices. Dev SDB and Dev SDC. Okay. That was it. You see there's a NAS folder. Of course, I can create a file. You notice I haven't um, had to... Uh, format a file system or anything. ZFS takes care of that automatically. There's nothing nothing to do. Well, if we want to see what we've done, let's go to zpool list. And as you can see, there's NAS. It has um, eight gigabytes because it's two hard drives that are mirrored. Um, and its health is online which means there's no issues. You notice there's a dedupe. There's fragmentation. All that good stuff. And that's it. Thought it'd be harder than that? Nope, not really. So let's, uh, let's see if we can look at some more stuff. How about we do, we could do, did I do Z? ZFS uh, list is another way of looking at it. You see NAS used, available, and the mount point, which is at slash NAS. Um, we can destroy this. So let's do this. Z pool destroy NAS. Whoops. I have to spell destroy correctly. Okay, the target is busy, yeah, because we're inside the folder NAS. And we're now, see the NAS folder is gone. We've destroyed it. Let's bring it back. There it is. Notice our test file is gone. So when you destroy it, yeah, it definitely destroys it. So we're going to destroy it again. Now I'm going to show you how to set up what would be the equivalent of a RAID 5 because we have three hard drives. So again, we use the zpool command. I'm going to create NAS RAID Z. And let's give it the devices. Dev SDB, Dev SDC, Dev SDD. Okay. Do a list. We can see there's NAS, it's 23 gigabytes. That's the size of it. Now let's see if we can get some more attributes. This here will continuously show you 
read write operations to the to the device and it's refreshing every second uh, let's see what else can we do and as you can see with when I do ZFS list it's showing me 15 gigabytes available because in raid with a raid 5 which this is the equivalent of even though I'm using three hard drives only two of the hard drive space is available so we get more or less 16 gigabytes the other the other space is used for parity okay so what we'll do now is I will show what happens with ZFS if we lose some drives so I'm going to um, stop the NAS and remove two of the drives out of out of the computer and then bring it back up show you what it looks like and then we'll add two new drives in and see if we can recover uh, first thing I want to show you is uh, we do the following command zpool status NAS and we'll just keep in mind what this looks like so this is the NAS pool it says it's online and we're showing that it's a RAID Z1-0 and we can see the three drives underneath they're all online there's no known data errors everything's cool so I'm going to take this so I'm going to take this uh, server down and remove the two drives and we'll see what it looks like so I rebooted the NAS and before I rebooted I took out one of the hard drives and so we rebooted a lot in its root if we look at the file system you see the NAS folders there uh, I didn't run any test data to it but the folders there which means if we go to zpool status it shows the pool NAS it shows the status is degraded status one or more drives devices should say could not be used because something's wrong and it says we have enough replicas exist to continue functioning in a degraded state and as you can see underneath the RAID Z we got SDB and C are online and then a number says unavailable and it says it was death SDD1 so now what I'll do is turn this computer off again put in a brand new hard drive and then we'll we'll add it back into the pool so I'm going to issue a halt command and we'll see you on the other side okay we've rebooted again I'm going to log in this root and we do LS block we see B and C and we have D and notice D has no partitions on it it's a brand new drive if we go to uh, zpool status we see the uh, just as we saw before the NAS is available but degraded which means at this point if we lost another drive we would be toast so uh, we need to get this uh, new drive in qu as quick as we can Fortunately, that's really easy. So we're just going to do zpool replace. I have extra space. Let me back up. Replace. And this is in the pool NAS. And we're going to put in dev sdd. Okay. Zpool status. And now we're online. You notice the scan says resilvered 54k and almost no time. Uh, resilvered is their terminology for uh, resyncing or rebuilding the RAID array. And you can look under, you see B, C, and D are all online. Everything's good. That was pretty easy. Of course, if we had a lot more data on here, the resilvering would take a while or it would take a little bit longer than what we did here but the drive would still be available and online while that was happening so the last thing for this uh, little ZFS tutorial is I want to show you how to do encryption on ZFS uh, uh, ZFS does have built-in encryption unfortunately from what I've read it is not ready for prime time especially on CentOS so there is another way to do the encryption 
first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to destroy our current pool. Okay. And let's gonna, we're going to wipe out all of the uh, partitions and everything on our drives. So let's go to F disk, dev, SDB. And let's go, let's see. Yeah, delete. Okay. And we will write the changes. See, write the changes and D, write the changes. So now we have our eight gigabytes almost back to factory condition, right? So, what we need to do is we have to format these drives with our crypt setup commands first, then we create Z, the Z pool on top. So, for example, let's do crypt setup. We're going to use the command Luke's format. And I'm just going to give the device name. So, SDB. It's going to ask for, yep. It says, are you sure you want to do this? Um, yes. Passphrase. Verify. And, of course, we'll get our, oh, there we're done. So we're done. So now we're going to do this also on, on C. Yes. Now it's asking for a passphrase. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use the same one, though you could use a different one. Okay. And now, lastly, let's do SDDD. Again, I'm going to use the same passphrase. Okay. So let's go to LS block. Doesn't really show anything here, so we need to now open. Crypt setup looks open. Dev SDB. And then we have to give it a name. So we're going to call this SDB encrypted. How about that? Whoops. Sorry, I misspelled. Enter into passphrase. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for C. And we're going to change it to this. Passphrase again. And lastly, we'll do D. Now you can see we have three encrypted volumes. That's D, B encrypted, C, and D. So now we can create our pool. So we'll do Z pool, create NAS. And we're going to do a RAID Z with the devices dev. I don't even know if I have to put that. Let's see if, if I can do SDB encrypted. SDC encrypted, DD encrypted, boom, zpool status. So as you can see, we have a RAID Z 1-0, which basically is the equivalent of RAID 5, with our three drives. The pool is NAS, which means we have a folder called NAS, and we can write data to it. We can do crypt setup status if we do sdb encrypted as you can see it's encrypted and uh, because we were creating these without data already on it the header for the encryption is on the drive itself which is fine and dfh you can see nas is 17 gigabytes which for a raid 5 with three a gig big 8 gigabyte drives is correct. And that's how you do encryption. Um, that sums up uh, ZFS. Uh, I really like ZFS on a NAS especially. 
uh, right now on my current NAS, uh, I don't have ZFS. I'm using LVM, and I need to get some more drives myself. And I will move my data over and create a ZFS pool and do all the nice fancy stuff that ZFS provides. Um, I'd recommend doing some Googling on ZFS. There's a lot more uh, commands that can be done, but this, the basic, basically what I showed you here will we'll get you started up. So I uh, hope you liked this video. Click like if you did, and subscribe to my channel. I got some more videos coming out. Uh, the next one, I believe, I will cover how to do backups for our NAS, both near and offline. Uh, basically, uh, by offline, I mean uh, not on our local network. I will be using uh, Amazon uh, AWS to do that. It's a very low cost compared to other backup services. Anyway, um, like I said, uh, stay tuned for that. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll talk to you soon.